the hand of fate decides where the fight will be. Half the time we see twice intensity. It's chaos. Creep. It's chaos. Creep. Hello there and welcome to Company of Ostrupen. This is Master League Tournament 3, Chaos Troopen. You're looking here in the South Nagano playing as the Ostrupen faction, loading in with Ostrupen as part of the Ostrupen Defensive Commander. This is a fantastic day for Ostrupen seeking and a good Ostrupen to you, my co-caster. Who do you see in the north? In the north we see Von Aston, probably going to go for Mechanize, um, like the old uh, meta. So, yeah. Let's see how the Ostrupen gonna go here with Nogano. Yep, it's gonna be Longress as our first game one and two map of this best of five third place playoff. The winner of this series will take home two hundred and fifty dollars and five crucial Master League points to you know get a higher seeding in the World Championship. The loser gets one hundred dollars and three Master League points. Um, how are you liking the Master League so far? Um, seeking is it a good good system for you? Do you like it? Ah, well, uh, it's a good way to, to, to play the modes. Uh, we have now 250 VPs that's uh, making the game more aggressive for the players. So Talking of said aggression, there we go. Seeking Von Aston goes straight yeah. down the line with the Rifleman. MG, good set up from Nagano, but he's got to be worried about the flank from the, the other Rifles. And yes, indeed, he's already setting up. And that that's it. We, we In these 250 VP modes, Seeking, we don't have much time to talk about other things because... Uh, the action's going to get very, very hot very, very quickly. It's, uh, everyone's going for the VPs, as you see. They are indeed. Pioneers sitting behind light cover there. In the east, we've got a Garrison with the rear echelon taking on Ostrupen, but the Jeep's first action is to go capping. Now, Von Aston's playing a very standard build here. I was uh, I had suspicions that we might see one of the players bring something out of the box. And, uh, they may be saving that for later in the series. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, maybe, but I don't think so, actually. They're really, really confident uh, with that build, and they don't want to test new, something new in the tournament. I mean, if you test something new, it doesn't give you a lot of... Uh, build up I would say you know maybe it works maybe not so we're not risking it WC 5-1 hasn't got its machine gun quite yet there he goes as soon as he gets the opportunity to do so he starts upgrading it and he's moving towards the Ostrupen of course no possibility of a Faust quite yet no battle phase sorry no uh, TL 1 or 2 planted yeah, Von Aston's struggling against the Ostrupen, but it just have so much manpower on the field already. Uh, he cannot cap. Not right now, he can't. He's had his cutoff taken. This MG's, that's a typical longer's pin. Mm. And uh, how's Von Aston allowed this to happen? The MG's just waltzed up there with limited uh, resistance. It just exploited the capping on the west and east side of the map, basically. Which is it's just typical longer's trap, isn't it? I don't know how much you, you've managed to play this map, again. I know you you were dominantly a 2 versus 2 player. Do you have this one vetoed in auto match, or do you play this one? No, I play this one. I have to veto other, other maps, which is uh, more awful. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Langus uh, on South is actually good, but North is just uh, not the best, in my opinion. No, but you you get what I'm saying, though. You don't go too far West and too far East, because you do yeah. leave this cutoff easily exposed, don't you? Yeah, well, against Ostrupen, there's just so much... Like, four Truppen are just everywhere, you know, and uh, you have to cap something. And when the MG pins you once down, you have to retreat, and then he just wants to your cutoff, you know. He's managed to wrestle out of it, though, uh, Von Aston, to his credit. Um, and his WC51 is beginning to pick up ma kills now. It's got his first, second kill. There we go. As the riflemen push in and the Ostrupen are forced away. MG set up in the garrison, however. But the Cav riflemen are coming into position. MG turns north facing, allowing this rifleman to get behind heavy cover behind the tractor there. And here comes the 2 2 2 more target straight in. Pioneers can now place tech traps. 
Let's keep an eye on this. Seeking this could go either way right now. WC51 taking on the 222. Needs to get back into base. Will the base bunkers help him out? Oh, it's just enough of a threat. Oh, it's really close, actually. Or maybe the wife is gonna go down because of MG. He's not looking for it. Yeah. Oh! Dear me, good call seeking. I wasn't tracking that one. I assumed Von Aston would have that had that retreated. But unfortunately, he's had a little bit of uh, an issue there. He did not retreat his rifleman. Ooh. I thought that would have been safe. Maybe he's just nervous right now. I don't know. Oh dear, oh dear. That's not a good start for our Dutch master. There's a best of five today, though, so they have a little bit of rebound ability. You know, you can you can never afford to lose a game, but if you can, it's certainly easier than a best of three. Exactly. But yeah, for Von Aston, it's not looking good. It's like he's just bleeding so much for in the five minutes already. The VP is going down. Yes, look at that, 142 and dropping rapidly. Triple cap engaged. Two, two, two is sitting there and stopping the very the expensive cavalry riflemen from getting any further forward. Rear echelon go to the tank trap they planted earlier. And they will get one victory point, but that's just uh, stemming the bleed. Yeah, Nogana's doing an excellent job right here. We have been assigned fresh panzer and he knows that... Um, one Aston cannot get the steward out, because he's bleeding a lot, so he can just play with the 2 2, two. Pretty aggressively. Yeah, allowing those cavalry riflemen, and they are still only 28 manpower, same as the riflemen, but allowing them anyway to bleed three models to the 222 earlier. Just showing that on in terms of manpower economy, it's not been an efficient game for Von Aston. He's a little bit shaky, and you can see that in the KD as well. 28 to 16. If we go over to the graph, the army value graph. Um, that doesn't show as much, but the KD shows us everything we need to know. Oh, there's a cheeky teller mine next to the 222 repairing on the left uh, VP. Oh, nice spot, yeah. Pioneers on double duty there, planting mines and repairing. Just trying to tempt him in as well. Look at this, he's going forward with a low health uh, 222. Hoping the Stuart is going to come out, it seems. That's his gambit here. Clever stuff by Nagano. saying chase me chase me just wants the steward to be on the field it isn't quite yet there a good pressure by the russian heavyweight nagano faustin on the wc51 but the austrian are continue the cap meanwhile pioneers versus cab rifleman austrian in the garrison rifleman take position behind heavy cover creating a pioneer sandwich Oh, it hurts so much for Von Aston. He doesn't even have an ammo out, and everything is just low, low, uh, low HP. Mm, he's the lieutenant like... even look at the base. It's just like standing there and waiting for the ammo. Oh man, such low health. He's got 50% yeah. health on each of those soldiers, except the one that's just been recruited. There's four guys with 50% or less health there. That's a terrible position to be in. King Stuart save us seeking. That's what Von Aston and all of the Vosta Von Astonites, that's the name of his fans by the way, the Von Astonites. That's what they're all screaming in chat. Save us Stuart. Yeah, well, it's really late Stuart um, and has to do a lot of work to, to make this game. So, let's see how he uses it. Look at the timing of the anti-tank gun from Nagano. He's bringing that out. Just as the Stuarts hit in, and that's the tale of the situation from um, USF versus Wehrmacht games of this tournament. The Stuart, if it eats pack shots early on, it's just going to mean that the power spike never really gets going. It's very, uh, not RNG dependent, but I suppose tactics and positioning dependent. Yeah, Nogana's really well prepared for the Stuart coming, and now he sees it. The pack is already moving on, so... And the Austrian, but the first shot misses, however, is just going to eat a Faust. Oh. Heat seeking missile Faust. The enemy down to 50, points. 50 points remain. Meanwhile, Nagora's only lost 232. 
This game's never really got started for Von Aston after a few shaky mistakes. Yeah, Von Aston's trying hard to get to the VPs, but it's so hard to hold it. The 2 to 2 just doing a lot of damage. Certainly is. 50 cals trying to... Ah, he's dropped from the game. He didn't even want to see oh, any yeah. more. GG. So that was game one, and Seeking was just telling me during that transition that he was really impressed by Nagano's play in that one. Yeah, really impressive. That's even against uh, the Jeep, he did so well with Ostrupen, but still, I mean, he was holding the VPs the whole game, literally. Oh, oh, oh we've, we're in for a treat in game two. No spoilers, Seeking. The factions are lit in this one. Oh, really? Yeah, so three minutes away from a really exciting factional dynamic. And this is not a ironic sarcasm or something. Just get excited because this game two is uh, is actually going to be lit, honestly. <laughs> oh, wait. Not to, not sane, Odyssey. Not sane, mate. Um, but just a, just a big thing, um, if you guys want the ability to uh, vote on the upcoming Master League projects, we've got two tournaments in December, like minor tournaments. One of them is going to be a patron-only tournament, the other will be a streamer-only tournament. And then in January, we're going to have Master League Tournament 4, which will shake meta up, and that'll be the, the promise. Just like Command, uh, the Commander Terminator did, it'll be within that kind of shaking things up again we didn't want to do it for this one because the world championships was in close proximity but in hindsight i wish we had to be honest but uh yeah if you want the ability to help out with that it's just five dollars a month it all goes into the prize pool it's there's no shenanigans after paypal fees sorry uh, patreon fees just straight into prize pool um we are becoming increasingly not the ae show it's be increasingly becoming a collaborative co community effort so uh, get involved and um yeah, five dollars a month gets you voting rights and uh, idea creation rights, everything basically. Uh, anyway, seeking, let's get into this game, shall we? Got two minutes until it's live. Let's not mess around though, because that second game was that first game was really quick, wasn't it? Oh, that's really quick, yeah. Ooh, oh, yes, oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You've seen it. Tired, that, oh, oh, that's yeah. Uh, let's just... let's not spoil it because, yeah. but we're excited. So yeah, they are indeed playing as the Japanese versus the uh, the Deutsch Afrika core. So <laughs> a bit of a mirror match there. Two new factions coming here as two, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> Corona is more balanced than this. Corona is balanced, and I'll tell you why. I've got a controversial thing to say. If you're a collectivist Asian culture where everybody helps one another and you have a duty to society, you, you're a quite a good factional matchup versus Corona. But if you're, you're a westernized, arrogant society where everybody's a special snowflake and has the, has the deserves liberty and freedom at all times, then um, Corona's going to ruffle stomp you in a 10 minute, you know, GG well played. So Corona is a, is a well balanced game mechanic, so don't, <laughs> don't give me that shit. <laughs> Anyway, let's uh, let's get it on. The hand of fate decides where the fight will be. Half the time we see twice intensity. It's chaos. Creep. It's chaos. Creep. Hello there, and welcome to Von Aston's OKW. He is on the south of Longras, and he's up against Nagano's Brits. What's happening, Seeking? What is happening out there? I, I really don't know. I don't know who picked... I think uh, Von Aston picked OKW, so Nagano's going for the counter pick and going instantly for Brits. Uh, so it's really interesting. No 4 tripping. No 4 tripping? I don't know how to cast this. I mean, what are these guys with... 
this is like a four man Austrian with Sturm Gewehrs. Okay, I can I can understand that. <laughs> Uh, four man Austrian with balls on their heads. Okay, yeah, I, I understand this. This makes sense to me. Fair enough. Um, Seeking, so explain the dynamics of this factional matchup for us, if you will. Well, Brits are just um, really, really strong against OKW. I mean, they're just sniping the models uh, in the long range, and you cannot really do against anything against it in the early game, at least. So. I don't really know why one Aston picked it and he just locked the Feuerstorm Doctrine. So. Oh, that uh, pronunciation is very, very Ramstein of you. <laughs> I can't say uh, Feuerfrei and I can't say Firestorm <laughs> either. It's, it's impossible for an English speaker to say the. Say it again. Just, I'm not going to have me so funky here, but just help me. How do I say the name of this commander, please? Firestorm. I just there's something going on there vowel wise. I can't do it. I just something. I know it's just firestorm, but it just sounds different to me. Anyway, this this commander though, Longras with Flammen Panzer Hetzers, assault packages, incendiary munitions, Opal Blitz trucks, and a rocket barrage. How's this gonna work? Uh, that's a good question. I really don't know. <laughs> What's it's really gonna first happen? time to see that someone is actually doing this. So I'm really excited to see that, and I hope it works for him. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited to see a four Tommy build. This is so cool from Nagano. Four infantry sections, one for each side of the map. How is it gonna go? <laughs> to be honest, I am actually quite happy to see Tommies. We haven't seen that. I haven't seen them all tournaments. It used to be a joke that the Brits four Tommies into AEC was a tired old strat, but uh, to be fair, I haven't seen them all tournament long, so I'm, I'm happy. It's fine. Yeah, it just gives something new, you know. It looks like it's a new, whole new game if you don't see mechanized and four trip in every, every game. <laughs> so, um, yeah. For some reason, my score boxes have glitched out on me. Hang on a sec, guys. Let me uh, get that corrected. I don't know why that happened. The new platoon command post is ready. Let's get straight into things. And we have an engagement in the north as Von Aston's looking to get the cut off. Taken off of uh, Nagano. Tommy's are holding firm for now, though. And Von Aston's doing a great job against Tommy. It's like he's still getting models out. So. He has so far. I like this uh, reinforced steel barricade on the truck, by the way. That's not a bad idea from him. Oh, so Nogano is going the five man bolts upgrade already. So he's Is he already skips... doing it? Yeah, yeah, he skips the UC carrier, looks like it, and skips a fast AEC. So he goes full of infantry. Interesting. He could have done with something uh, similar when he had just had combat engineers on the field yesterday from North Longras. Um, it just he just didn't have the infantry power to push through against Axis. But this time he's going to have more than enough infantry power. The you know sustainability and kill lethality of the Tommies at five men is really good. Enemy has supply lines broken. However, the Fortunities have been able to break through to the cutoff, just like we saw in G1. Both Grenadiers are a little bit low health, and the three-man infantry sections are amassing against them. Yeah, I think Von Aston's really doing a great job against Tommies right now. It's uh, impressive, really. Using their own heavy cover against them as well. Yeah, that's the reason I would I say always like don't ever put uh, a green cover from your own uh, on, the, on, the, on the cutoff, you know, so the enemy cannot use it. Yeah, it's a pro point, and uh, we just saw why we don't do that. And we've now got Stern Pioneers with a flamethrower. Any top 3,000 1v1 auto match player can attest to how good this strat is. Just get three Stern Pioneers into flamethrower, bro. You'll be top 2,500 in no time. Indeed. <laughs> Let's play only uh, Stone Pioneers, only. <laughs> Royal Engineers close the gap. I hope that sandbag and barbed wire was worth it for Von Aston. I hope he's got follow-up because uh, he's suffering for victory points uh, at the moment. He's only gotten the one, whereas Nagano current soon have a two cap against him with a mine on the point as well. We know he's but focusing I... fuel at the moment. Yeah, yeah, he always focuses for the fuel and the cutoff. I mean, it's good. Uh... Nogano skipping AC looks like, I think he didn't even upgrade it yet, so I, maybe he's gonna go for the fast Valentine or the Cromwell, and every few points it's, uh, it hurts him if you lose it. 
Tommy's pushing in. Forcing away the Focus Grenadiers for now. We had uh, this Focus Grenadier pushed away in the east, so he lost that engagement. But look at this strong contingent emerging from the base sector. He's got to go straight for this victory point. He can't afford himself to be triple capped at any point. Royal Engineers have taken the garrison, though, just to stop his advance. And, well, he's got the flamethrower, so that'll certainly help him. Hey, he has a good use of the flamers right there. So, not a good, uh, I mean, a good pickup. Yeah, not a bad. Uh, worked so well far for him. He's got the MG34 as well now, so he should be able to start holding victory points against the Tommy Horde. <laughs> and the corner's gone for a, a, a six pounder, a preemptive six pounder. I mean, I know he's always going to build one, but I never get when people build AT guns without there being anything from the Axis. Although, is he. I don't know. What's he thinking here? Uh, I, I think if that. He guesses that there will be a looks out soon and he just wants to be prepared and not gonna get pushed out uh, from the whole map, you know. If the looks hits and he pushes you away, it's a 250 VP game mode. He can just sit on the v uh, VPs then and it's really hard to get it back. So I, I guess he's just, uh, he, get, he wants to get prepared for it. That's a really good point, Sikin. I like that. So he, he doesn't want to be pushed away for even a moment. So he's getting the AT gun out in preparation because of the game mode. It makes a lot of sense. And Nagano so far has only lost one victory point. So he's really sitting strongly at the moment. MG34 backtracking away from the infantry section. Grenade in. Oh. That hurts. One. It does. And now he's shooting through one window as well with more following. He gets out of there just about. Fortunately for Von Asten, he was able to cap the east and he's going for that fuel point yet again. So, yeah, Von Asten got the mechanized up, but he doesn't get anything out of there. I mean, he's bleeding right now, so maybe that's the reason. True, true. He's, he is reinforcing the first grenadiers, though, and the MG34, so he's not exactly just going to try and rush a Luke's out. This is, uh, you know, saving grace. Certainly wants to keep this cut off, but the munitions are being taken, so it's not really going to help him too much. It is all about the victory point meta, of course. Oh, the nades. Oh, didn't hit it. Oh, nice yeah, there's, a, there. there's a mine waiting for him as well, but here it is! The Opal Blitz cargo truck is out for Von Aston. The hype as the logistic supply network of the Germans is massively increased. No, no hype for logistics or supply chain management there. Seeking. Yeah, well, he just parks it in the base. I thought like he's gonna go, uh, I don't know, in the, in the front line and just reinforce them. You know, just doing the hunts. But uh, <laughs> he just parked it in the space. So. Yeah, but this this says blitz to me. Parking a truck in your base. That is <laughs> that is a. Uh, <laughs> he's got his spreadsheets out. He's trying to make efficiencies. Probably restructuring the uh, office staff. <laughs> of the base sector right now. Mate, I tell you, his overheads are gonna be rapidly reduced. Probably, yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh nice, uh, Focus Grandy has forced away that infantry section and he's able to, ah, that was the explosion we heard. There's another mine as well, this could be oh. a mine squad wipe. <laughs> he's be really careful over there. Forced away in the center there. And Organa's really nice with uh, planting mines everywhere. He just plants another one on the fuel on the right side, so... <gasps> Opal Blitz really is coming annoying. out. He's reversing oh. in. He's got the Stern Pioneers in there as well. Opal Blitz hype. Hype. Now the Blitz tactics are going in. Oh. This is cool. I don't know what he's doing, but it, I, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's different. Every, anything that they can give us is different right now. Flame Blitzer, we've heard that in chat. <laughs> Reverse Blitz as well, there's a mine goes off, kills another two folks Grenadier. And yes, he indeed just blitzed them into position like a taxi cab. Exciting. Yeah, goes in the base again, probably gonna pick up the folks and move them in the front line. I he is, oh no he's not, he's just the Uber blitz. driver, the Uber driver. <laughs> Oh gosh. And now he's healing. There's that helping hand style on the field, but oh no, the Command Valentine has one or two things to say about your Blitz. 
Panzerfaust in. He needs another one. Does he get it? Yes, he does. He damages the engine vitally, keeping that Opal Blitz supply chain operational. First grenade is behind the heavy cover trying to protect the base. Grenade on retreat. Is it a good one? Looks okay. Oh, a little bit late. Ooh, a Puma out as well to follow up for Von Aston. Not a bad idea. That's a good idea to push away the Valentine. I mean, it's going to be really hard to come, come out of this base right now. No, the sections are just... Base pinning him. They're obnoxious, aren't they? And they're healing when they're not in combat and they're staying on the field for much oh, longer. Yeah. I think there will be a nade coming out from the right section and next to the folks. You can see it. Yeah, he's Behind poised. Maybe the nade. There it is. There it is. Wolverine has to yeah. see it. Oh, he's not seeing it. Oh, that's brutal. Oh. Could have been worse. If he'd retreated two squads there, it could have been wipes, man. Yeah. Right, if you want a... Uh, oh, he's just had the bug where he randomly reverses for <laughs> two seconds for no reason. He picks up an in... Oh, no, he doesn't. He kills the sandbag, at least. And there you go, Von Aston is back out. He's got 140 victory Fine, points yeah. left. Yeah, well, Logano's still planning mines because he knows that there's only one stone pyre with flames upgraded and yeah. he cannot sweep them. He's been tactically outplayed in that regard, yeah. Von Aston has. He is, Nogano just saw it coming. He was like, okay, you haven't got a minesweeper. Time for the mines upon mines upon mines. Six pounder returns fire against the Puma. And the Valentine is now uncountered. MG34 pushes up, but he needs to get in that capping circle. He's worried about the mines. What can he do against them, however? Yeah, Von Aston is really desperate. He goes for the VPs. You can see he's really afraid. He is. However, he's got on the Eastern victory point at least. He still has triple digit figures. Um, yeah, but soon he, the sections of the, from his base coming out from Nagano. Oh, they're, they're all fanning out, are they? Yes, here they come indeed. We've had a, a cap in the east and a cap in the uh, west for Von Aston. Valentine on its four kills is now looking for further blood. Oh, what's is coming out for Von Aston? I'd love a Von Aston win in this situation. It would be so cool to see some uh, non-meta. I know he's not up against United States forces in this case, so... But, um, of course, Nagano has gone for the most used Brit commander, Royal Artillery Regiment. So I think the uh, the diversity fans in chat will be on in Von Aston's camp at the moment. I mean, Von Aston did really well in the beginning. He was pushing Nagano away, got the cut off, the fuel of him. So I don't know what happened at the end. I think it was just too much sections pushing him away. Oh, nice shot on retreat there as well. Let's. I want to check oh. something. I want to look for squad wipes. I don't think there's been a single squad wipe quite yet. Now I'm going to change over to... I think I have to change to Nagano next. Yes, indeed. There's not been a squad wipe yet. Um, it's... it's it, Everybody's got what they've uh, this, they've built, basically. Which shows that both players are retreating in time. But um, Nagano's certainly winning tactically because he's been able to drain more victory points at this moment. Panzer two, going up to the Tommies in the northwest. That's going to necessitate a retreat, most likely. He's bunched them up now. Nagano's not seen it quite yet. They're a little bit late there. Oh, the Tommies are coming. They are indeed. MG34 has pushed away. This could be a triple cap incoming now. This could be the end for Von Aston. However, he finds a nice shot through the bushes there. Needs the Panzer two to rush in and do something. He needs to get crazy. He needs to get chaotic. Otherwise, he's not winning this game too at all. Uh, Nogano's, like I said, so good with spamming mines on the right. Like, he just kept the right side and spams mines. 
classic co-game play there. Six pounder has been circumvented. Von Assen's going forward past it. His infantry goes forward also. There's no mines in the vicinity. But the Puma's taken out by the Valentine. Oh dear, oh dear. And Von Assen taps out. And uh, we see Nagano 2-0 up in this series. Jeez. That was game two seeking. It was, uh, it was nice factional choices, but unfortunately for Von Aston, Nagano's just playing on fire today. Yeah, he was really good. Uh, this counter, counter them with the mind spam. But I mean, Von Aston, it, it was a nice try, I would say. At the beginning, he was, he was playing well, um, but then he just got overrun from sections. I can understand as an OKW player, you can really not deal against uh, Brits. So yeah. Yeah, it was good stuff though, and um, let's just have a little look at chat and see who we've got out there today. As you guys may have seen on the slides, we've got Gunther um, Nuremberg's uh, picture of him and his buddies all all grouped up in in the uh, the co shack, probably with a few beers on Grand Finals Day. I would I would hope, and we've got five hundred of you lovely people in chat as well. Um, I will just say it, just to, as I've said it earlier, I'll probably just say it again quickly. We will be having some really big decisions for the Master League coming up. We're going to have two small tournaments in December and one big one in January. And uh, if you want to be a part of the uh, kind of selection process and voting process, just become a $5 benefactor and you get all those voting rights and access to juicier information. So uh, go ahead and do that. Kind of using the Ostrupen stagnation of this tournament seeking to uh, to mark it. <laughs> That's is that a good tactic. I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> We've got the World well, Championships as well, which is probably going to be more of the same stuff I would expect. Yeah, I hope there will be a somehow a, like a, I don't know, maybe like a small balance uh, up, up, update with the Ostrupen. Make them a little bit uh, more expensive. And the timing of the P grants is just uh, way too early, in my opinion. Yeah, they do come a little bit early. Um, I just think move Panzerfaust to Battle Phase 2 would be a good change. You know, can't have Ostrupen uh, being able to constantly stop all light vehicles countering them. Uh, M3 would then be a good counter to it, for example, if you remove the mm. Panzerfaust for later. That's something I think Isilda said that earlier today, actually. But yeah, the players are on a five-minute break at the moment um, seeking, so we're going to do the same. We're going to be gone for the next three minutes, guys, and we'll be right back. Thank you.
hand of fate decides where the fight will be. Half the time we see twice intensity. It's chaos. Creep. It's chaos. Creep. Hello there, and welcome. And don't worry everybody, I've had a word with the players. I've spoken to them, and I've said cut that non-meta crap out. We don't want to see any new factions or new ideas. We want Ostrupen. The, f the community and the fans demand it, quite frankly. We've not got 102 patrons out there donating their hard-earned cash during a pandemic to not see Ostrupen in every game. So the players have answered our call. They've listened to that edict, and they have responded. And we are with Nagano's Ostrupin in Game 3 of this third-place playoff. Who do you find seeking in the North? Ivan Aston playing the SUSF with Mechanized locked in. Uh, it's a new commander, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, now we're talking. It's a new, new DLC coming out here. Lovely stuff. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this new DLC Mechanized company... It's just, Combined Arms is my favourite bit of it, I must admit. We saw um, a great push from Asilda to take out Nagano yesterday. Combined Arms utilised extremely, uh, extremely well. Combined Arms really OP, in my opinion. Like, if you have a vehicle there next by, it's just so much damage. The accuracy and the reload boost. So... Rear Echelon's trying to hold the line right, right from behind heavy cover. More joining the fray. WC51 makes its way to the. Yeah, the standard uh, build ups two rifles, uh, the Jeep, and um, with Nogana, we just see the Austrian going in. Nothing captured. new. <laughs> Nothing new for now. It's a beautiful map, though. It's always nice to be back on Fame and Villa Approach. We do miss it so. A's fun facts for you about Fame and Phil Approach. This is a random artifact left in by a map maker that wasn't seen and now it's in the game. It's a random pier in the middle of a lake. That's my number, random fact number one. That's all I've got time for today. I'm sorry. Riflemen move across the crater and the MG finds them. However, they're behind heavy cover, which will knock off some of the suppression. They're able to keep up the aggression on the Ostrupen for a little while longer. They wait for the burst to finish and then they move. That's pro play by Von Aston. You can see again the power spike, you know, like one Aston has only two rifles and the G where where um, Logan has three Ostrupen, the Pioneer and the MG, like he can cap the whole map, you know. Uh, it's really not balanced. It is not and Ostrupen pushing up. Ooh, it's a teller. Look, Nogana's putting a teller next to the money point in the top. Right. Nice. Oh, there it is. That's a that's a high traverse in area as well. He has been seen by the WC51 though, so maybe Nagano's instinct will kick in. We'll have to wait and see. Pioneers don't usually... Well, they obviously had to cap the munitions, but uh, we'll have to see if he thinks about it. It is possible that he does. He's been around the block as Nagano, as they say. Oh, he's reversing. No, what's he doing? Keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, in the southwest, rear echelons forced away by Ostrup and overwhelming them. Bravely for the Reich. The enemy is down to 200 points. Already 200 points. Yep. That, that oh dear, oh dear. Cav rifleman out. Doesn't have the munitions quite yet. WC51 is doing a good job, and uh, in the north, the riflemen are going to cap the victory point and stem the tide of the bleed for now. But Ostrupen are going straight in for the cutoff immediately. And where's the collateral from Von Aston to stop this happening? He's currently going in to deny fuel there. WC51 is going to try and stop the situation. Does he get a Faust off? Yes, he does. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Sweepers on the rear echelons. I think he spotted the mines. I like, 
he spotted it, but I think he didn't see it because he ran for the cutoff. Mm. So maybe he's gonna go back to. Um... Oh yeah, he goes. He goes for it. So. Nice. He's seen it. Good play by Von Aston. I did, of course, mean Von Aston earlier, but uh, he spotted it and he swept it. Good play by him, and he's stabilizing as well. Don't forget that uh, USF needs to survive against the two-two-two supremacy up till around seven or eight minutes when they get the Stuart, and then they get the opportunity to have their power spike. It's been the story of Meta um, for the last uh, couple of months now. Oh wait, he he doesn't sweep it. He doesn't what? For the, for the mini prime. But it's a bit unveiled, so unless he's distracted. Yeah. Cav rifleman bleeding. Oh dear. I swear though, he hasn't been able to cap this uh, fuel in the south. 222 doesn't like that, he's gonna go hunting. Is the WC-51 going to try and get a sneaky? Oh, yeah, it doesn't quite have it available at this point. 40 munitions. He only has 26. Mark target I'm talking about, of course. Ah, Stuart's coming out. It's quick Stuart there. He's been able to get a good amount of fuel somehow, Seeking. Yeah, that's pretty good. Said he needs the Stuart against the Ostrupen. Because in Nangus Kai, he got the Stuart at like 8 minutes, 9 minutes. It's really, really late. Oh, Lieutenant could die. It does indeed die. That's a brutal loss. He was trying to get the mark target off, he was trying to gather munitions, he got the bazooka upgraded, but not before the lieutenant dies, he can pick it up though. We've had a plane crash in the west. The jeep goes for, for, for the fight, for the 2-2-2. Two -two -two. Very dangerous, very dangerous indeed from Nagano. North side, rear echelons could die! And he still didn't sweep it. No, the not yet. Still there. <gasps> Faust on the WC-51, possibly. Does he get close enough? No, not quite. He doesn't have enough munitions. Maybe the MG gets it. If he goes full fire. No, he doesn't. Couldn't, too late. Uh, couldn't get it in time. Meanwhile, Pioneers versus Rifleman in the north could burn them out here. He needs to watch that engagement. Has he seen it? Uh, it's a little bit late. Oh, Stuart comes in and gets Fausted immediately. Don't have enough for incendiary rounds at 15 munitions, though. Fifty cal's the next option for von Assen. He really couldn't have. Oh, and Panzergrenadier is on retreat here. This is domination from Nagano. Absolute brutal domination. Yeah, that's not really looking good for, for von Assen. He gets the uh, triple cap, and now he's bleeding again. No ammo, so the wife was just. Dropping models like crazy. Oh. Oh dear, oh dear. Meanwhile, Stuart coming into the southern sphere of influence. The MG42 bat pedals into the garrison. L drops down to one man. This could be a nice pickup for Vanessa. Can he get it? He's got a pack and then unpack. And he's dead. There you go. Good pickup for, no for Von Aston. That was actually good that he's. Hmm? We are standing in the house, so uh, one Aston cannot recruit. Ostrup and forced away. Stuart watching on DBC 5 1 also. Push in. Did they get a Faust? Yes, they do. Look at the range on that thing. Oh. Nasty. He's standing and fighting for now, though, but the Pack 40, of course, is making its way onto the field. Oh, but listen to that commander. 75 points remain. Oh, and the pack 40 finds him. This has been an unfortunate game for Von Aston. But the main thing I've noticed, Seeking, is Nagano is just dominating today. Playing extremely well. He's very prepared for, for the for Von Aston, how he plays. And he just, he's so strong in the early game. Like, he caps everything. Has the whole map, and yeah, just well played. What's the, does this make you fear for Von Ivan later? Um, you know, if Nagano got this Nagano got manhandled by a Silder yesterday, what kind of monster is a Silder? Like, is he gotten that good that he is now capable of demolishing Nagano? Who today Nagano looks unbeatable. He looks awesome. Yeah, but Silder yesterday made him. Look weak, quite frankly, at times, at least at times, you know. Um, so what? Is, who is this Asilda guy? And and he's just 
off the hook right now. In my opinion, Izzy is Izzy just a god. He's really <laughs> strong, seriously. Um, he's so aggressive and he doesn't make that many mistakes on field. Um, that's the reason he's so good. And I mean, maybe Nogano did he had just a bad day. It depends on the players as well, how they are on that day. But I didn't sense that, you know. I kind of... I didn't see big mistakes coming from Nagano yesterday. I just saw a superlative play from Asilda. Got people in chat urging Von Ivan to win later on in the grand final. The best of seven encounter for 1,200 of your dollars. Yeah, I'm really excited for Von Ivan there. I think we all are. He's a community favourite and a heartthrob. <laughs> the white card. He is the wild card. He is indeed. He's the yeah. master of chaos. Oh, Stuart finds the WC5. One is marked targeted. 50 cal tries to traverse, but he can't get it right now. He's moving in and out of its sight range and gets the kill. Expert play by Nagano, waiting for the turn of the 50 cal, and now it's its turn to be shot in the face. Yeah, but still, uh, Van Asten managed to get the right side. Oh, well played by him. We didn't even see that. The Stuart using its uh, crew members as well. Desperately scratching and crawling. Clawing, rather, to keep in this game, and he's hanging on to it with the uh, with his fingernails right now. He finds the pack 40s position, however, he's trying to circumnavigate it. Two, two, two knows he's vulnerable. He goes forward, might get a cheeky shot here. Get does he get past the garrison? No, he gets shot in the back. Two, two, two looking to get away. Needs a quick turret traverse, but he's gonna eat another pack shot and a Faust. Oh, that's brutal there for von Aston. Um. Ah, oh, this this really hurt. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. He's oh. given the skull of defeat just below the score box. There, I'll show remind you all of what um, what that looks like. The little red skull that signifies he is indeed tapped out and surrendered. And Nagano claims two hundred and fifty dollars and five crucial master league points. I think that might may confirm him to be top of the Master League table. I'll have to wait to see what happens uh, later on today. But uh, GG, well played for Aston. Well played, Nagano. And uh, thanks, Cass Sin Seeking. That was a good uh, third place playoff. Yeah, when Aston's texting me right now, it's like <laughs> a terrible weekend for him. Like, he's yeah. so stressed in real life, having some symptoms. Oh, I, I mean, we all like Von Aston. He's one of, like, I think... This is... I'm going to speak candidly here and hope he doesn't mind. I'm not trying to be insulting to him. When you first interact with Von Aston as, like, an organizer or a caster or a, probably a 2v2 teammate, he's he's quite an annoying guy, but then you realize his heart is in his, the right place and he's quite a sweet guy, so it goes from really annoying to really kind of, oh, Von Aston. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. all, we all love him. We've all got a soft spot for him, but... And, and the, the thing is, we all know that he is one of the best players in the world as well, and um, on, on a given day seeking, he can beat anybody in a long series, anybody in the world. That's true, like, uh, just... He's, he tells me right now that he's, he was so stressed and last weekend he was so relaxed. That's why he played good better. I mean, you know, his, his weak part is just this emotional stressing. And mm. uh, I think that's the reason why he cannot focus then, you know. But uh, it's, he's a nice guy. Like, I talk with him a lot of times and uh, stuff what happened in his real life. And he's a really nice guy. Just Yeah. You know, he's just this, this emotional guy, just a baby <laughs> sometimes. Oh, but we're in a good way, yeah. right? We're being nice, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, in a good way. And we're all friends here. And um, I, I, I've identified through my years of, of talking to people 
the kind of person that is a great Company of Heroes player and wins the tournaments and the big money is and isn't necessarily your typical aggressive alpha male. It's more the more considered, like, laid-back thinker. I'm not saying weak by any stretch of the imagination, but the kind of guy that sees clearly in, in moments of stress and and, 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 and and doesn't get... Yes, tunnel vision. They, everybody gets tunnel vision playing co, but is able to just have the ability to have the tunnel vision, but stay in control, almost. And if you think about Talisman, if you think about Love Nest, Dev M, all these guys, yeah, they have a mean streak. They have aggression. Jessulin is another example. Four guys there that... Um, are consistent winners of the tournaments, you know, and they all have this kind of chill to them where they, yes, they can get aggressive and tunnel vision and focus, but crucially, they don't let it overcome them. And, um, and yeah, middle class nerdy yeah. type. <laughs> Sorry, what's that seeking? What did you say, mate? No, I was saying uh, you're right. It's actually, yeah, it's just, it's just a personality profile, and I just noticed some, some, I could never do it. <laughs> I am a typical <laughs> control freak, aggressive guy, like that kind of thing. I don't t chill out in moments of crisis. I like really just tunnel vision in, and you know, so I'd, I'd probably be terrible. Yeah, lieutenants heard the the rumors of Jezulin cursing in Spanish and been very like ah! during GCS two, and he was yeah, but you know, he was very chill and real in person. You know, he's very quiet, kind of laid back guy, is what I mean. Just a theory, anyway. I'm not always right. Okay, let's see what's happening in the Steam. Let's spin the wheel for the grand final now. Um, and then we'll, um, well, we could wait, wait 10 minutes and then we'll spin. Then spin. Um, and then we're going to start the grand final at half past two, guys. So 14.30 GMT. Um, so in 15 minutes time, basically, it's going to be a 10 minute wait. Um, everybody say thanks to Seeking for casting today. He's done a great job of analyzing the matches there. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. It was a real pleasure, and uh, <laughs> see you in, see you in ten minutes, guys, when we spin the uh, the wheel of fate. Thank you. <laughs>